Welcome to Frederick. Good morning, and welcome to worship at Frederick Presbyterian Church. There are lots of announcements. Um, as you can see, people are lining up. I want to just uh, welcome everyone on your pew. There's a black pad. If it's your first time with us, we especially welcome your contact information. Uh, there's a yellow card. There's a QR code, uh, and we want to know who you are, and um, welcome to worship here. Join us for fellowship immediately following worship downstairs in the fellowship hall, which is out these doors and down the steps at the end of uh, Heritage Hall. Uh, Judy. So I'm Judy Johnson, and just a reminder for those of you that have already volunteered for Vacation Bible School, you need safe sanctuary training. There's one after worship today and one in two weeks on the 23rd after worship. Thank you. Next. Uh, <clears throat> I went over to Meg Outerset about three minutes ago and said, would you make an announcement about the churchwide retreat? And she said, sure. So here she is. <laughs> so I have absolutely nothing planned. Um, so, okay, this is, we think the 11th year, it may be more than that, of the, we also call it the getaway retreat weekend. It's fantastic. Um, Lisa Myers and my husband Stefan share the title of people who have never missed one. I missed one. Um, but it's a great time to get to know each other. There are activities that we share as a group, kind of team building, community building activities. Some of them um, can get kind of raucous, as James Kleene can tell you, um, with, with, you know, with, uh, but, but it's for everyone. These are activities that are set up for everyone. Um, there are spiritually based activities. Other activities are purely for fun. Not that spiritually based ones can't be fun. They are, but there's both. Food is really good. Um, and then it's just a wonderful time in a fantastic setting. Massaneta, there's woods for hiking. There's spaces for, gosh, volleyball kickball, you name it. Um, it's fabulous. So there are still spaces available. Lisa is uh, in charge of, as, as, as she is every year, of ensuring that um, people get beds. If you turn to the inside of the last page of uh, the bulletin, you will see, I think it was the inside of the last page, second to the last page, a reminder. Do it. You won't regret it. Thanks. Thanks, and that's with no preparations. So. Hi, hi, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here to talk about VBS, Vacation Bible School, and just again to put out a call for participants. Please, please, if you know somebody, um, I'm sure a lot of people around here know of a child, a kid, somebody who might want to spend um, four wonderful mornings uh, at VBS coming up on July 24th to the 27th. Please um, have them go online. Again, in the bulletin, there is a, a link where they can go to register. We'd love to see them there. We have wonderful volunteers, and we are looking for one more volunteer for nursery. So if you have some uh, desire to help us out with that, that would be wonderful. Please seek us out. Hey, everyone. Um Really quickly, first off, some of you already know, uh, the uh, youth mission trip left this morning for Virginia, so just uh, so far so good. I've heard from Ashley and they're just somewhere in Virginia right now driving. But um, you know, much, much prayers this week for that would be appreciated. Um, second off, a few weeks ago I sort of implored for some um, softball 
uh, attendance for the church, and I wanted to thank you guys. We went from like one to like 10 in our last game, so that was awesome. Um, and we won one of them, so there we go. Uh, just wanted to announce really quickly that this week there is no game. I, I know this says that there was one in the bulletin, but for anyone who was thinking about going, uh, the other team uh, didn't have enough players. So just wanted to announce that in case anybody was thinking about going, but we'll hopefully see you guys next week. Thanks. And last. Hi, I'm Dennis Burkhart, Chair of Fellowship, and also knows Mr. Hospitality. Uh, August 19th, Pine Cliff Park is going to be our annual church picnic, catered, of course, by Mission Barbecue. Uh, fun and games and prizes and uh, lots of recreation and cool weather is guaranteed. So, <laughs> August 19th, three o'clock, Pine Cliff Park. Are there other announcements? Let us worship God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary, and I will give you rest. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. We rejoice, God our Father, for in your tender compassion you shoulder our burdens and ease our heavy hearts. Give us the strength to carry each other as you have carried us. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. Therefore, let us confess our sin with every confidence that we will be lifted up. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will. Listen, hear, and believe the good news of our faith. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, showing compassion to all. So forgiven and freed, let us rise up with joy Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. of Christ. Let us share our peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us greet one another with signs and words of Christ's peace. forward. Cooper's coming. He's reading a book as he comes. He stopped to read a book. <laughs> Cooper! Come on! Here comes Macy. Good morning. How's everybody? Everybody okay? Good. Good. Good to hear. Good to see everybody. Today we hear Jesus talk to his friends, and Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary. What does weary mean? Anybody know what weary means? Tired. Tired. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. 
How about a burden? Anybody know what a burden is? No? Anybody? No? Let's see if anybody out there has a word for burden. What's a word for burden? What? A load. A what? A heavy load. So Jesus says, come to me if you are tired and are carrying a heavy load, and I will give you rest. Who knows what rest is? Anybody know what rest is? Anybody? Like sleeping, but you're allowed to not close your eyes. Oh, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's like sleeping, but you don't have to close your eyes. It's just kind of resting. And, you know. I sleep like that at night. You, like, you sleep like that at night? Well, you have to close your eyes at night. Yeah. You do too. <laughs> and Jesus says, here's the, here's, the, here's the next part. He says, take my yoke upon you. Anybody know what a yoke is? What? Yes, if that's spelled Y-O-L-K, but this is Y-O-K-E, which is a different word. But, but you're right, you're right. But Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. And I happen to have a picture of two oxen. Can you see them, Coop? Look. They look sort of like buffalo. They look sort of like buffalo. And they, do you see this thing on their neck? That's called a yoke. And because they are carrying this yoke and are actually attached to this yoke, they are able to do a lot heavier and a lot more work because they're working together. And Jesus says, take my yoke and we can do it together. We can take care of your heavy load and your heavy burden because you are with me. And that's what Jesus is telling, to, to walk with him or let him walk with us and Jesus will take our heavy burdens and carry us and help us to make it through. And in this one, you can see a little bit better. You see? They're working the fields, and they're able to do a lot more work because they're working together. And Jesus says, take that yoke, take my yoke, and we can work together. Let us pray. Oh, God. We know what rest is, but sometimes we find it hard to do so. But in, with you, we know that we are able to rest with you. Walk with us, be with us, help us with our heavy loads when we are weary and tired. Amen. Okay, y'all can go back to your seat. Hey, nice pink shoes. Let us pray. Comforting God, by your Holy Spirit, lift the burdens from our souls through the reading and hearing of your word for us, that we may learn to experience the rest that comes through a loving relationship with you. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Psalms. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the church at Rome. Paul writes, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God <clears throat> in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
people of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, but to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I just came back this past week from two weeks of worship and music conferences at Montreat, which is near Asheville, North Carolina. Montreat is one of our th church's three national conference centers. And each year we are there. These conferences are two one-week twin conferences sponsored by the Presbyterian Association of Musicians. I helped lead a workshop called Professional Development. And this workshop is for musicians and pastors mostly, and it's a, a catch-all workshop addressing things like how to navigate a new call as a musician or a pastor, offering resources for planning worship, or thinking about and talking about such philosophical things like why we do what we do as people who worship. And of course, the ever-present topic of how to work with your musician, conversely known as how to put up with your pastor. <laughs> I sit in the, the workshop and with many conversations throughout the two weeks, giving immense thanks to God for Brian. and our working relationship. Several years ago, and this is not on my page, but several years ago when I was preparing to lead a class on collaborative worship planning, Brian was in the copier room working, and I came out and I said, Brian, if you had to describe how we do what we do, what would you say? And he said, trust. We trust each other. And then he said, and communication. We communicate with each other. And Brian and I do. We are constantly texting or emailing or dropping in his office or my office, and it makes it work, and I am thankful for that. Anyway, I co-led the workshop two weeks ago with Mark Kemp. Now, Mark is an incredible gentleman who is the Director of Music and Worship Arts at Myers Park Presbyterian Church in Charlotte. He also currently serves as the president of the Presbyterian Association of Musicians. Mark is an incredible person and a really good friend. He was supposed to lead the workshop on his own, but he's undergoing medical treatments every four days, which took him back to Charlotte three times over the two weeks, and I was called in to help out. Anyway, Mark really wanted us to look at various topics without saying that C word, COVID, but it just didn't happen. Because as pastors and as musicians, well, as humans, a lot of what we do, a lot of how we experience church, a lot of how we live and operate as humans is situated 
in a post-COVID world. In other words, the church is trying to figure out how we do church these days, just like everything else is trying to figure it out. All of us have been affected. Even before COVID, the need for mental health workers was great, but now there just aren't nearly enough counselors and therapists for those seeking help. Ask the mental health world and they'll tell you. I asked Rebecca Lehman earlier this week, Rebecca serves as the Director of Development for the Frederick County Mental Health Association, and I, told, I asked her to just fill me in on a little bit of recent statistics. She told me this week that in the last year, the call center for Frederick County Mental Health Association answered 56,000 calls more than 1,600 in crisis used the walk-in service, and of those walk-ins, 42% were under the age of 18. She also told me that they answer a call pertaining to suicide every three hours. Every three hours, somebody is calling. And all of us, with or without COVID, all of us find ourselves at times depressed, lonely, sad, angry, worry-ridden. Or if not we ourselves, then someone we know, someone we live with, someone who is near us, someone we work with or go to school with is going through something. Now, I'm sure that you will agree with me that if life were happy and joyous and without problems, life would be wonderful, but, but I'm afraid life is not that way at all. You know it as well as I do, life has its ups and downs, its good times and bad times, life times when we are weighted down. Your son has lost his job. Your friend is unhappy in her marriage. Your boss is a real jerk. You just can't seem to feel right about anything much these days. In today's reading from Matthew's Gospel, we hear of Jesus when his life must not have been going so well. He felt the pressure of the crowds they wanted something more than he came to offer. They were not satisfied. It seems he couldn't satisfy their desires for who they thought he would be. On one hand, they thought John the Baptist was a religious kook, a fanatic. He ate strange food and insects and he didn't drink. And to them, that was weird. Meanwhile, Jesus, on the other hand, according to the crowds, was a drunk because he hung out and ate and drank with the wrong kind of people. They said, look, he's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of sinners. And it seems like all of this may be weighed down on Jesus. And it seems like in today's passage, we meet Jesus at an all-time low. He was reflecting on a failed attempt of reaching out to the people in several nearby cities, and out of desperation, Jesus turned to the Father in prayer, and Jesus was given strength for the journey ahead. Jesus prays a short prayer to God, and Jesus' prayer is then followed by words which my guess is you've heard before. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We hear those words at funerals. We see them sometimes on a card or a cross stitch hanging. I say these words sometimes when we are getting ready to gather around the communion table. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, 
take my yoke upon you. Well, like I showed the children a few minutes ago, a, a yoke is this thing, this piece of equipment that is placed around the necks of two or more beasts of burden, such as an ox, and the yoke is placed around the neck so the animals could pull heavy loads together. They, they work as a team and are able, therefore, to get much more work done. But in the Bible, many times in the Bible, the term yoke is symbolic of the people being in captivity or slavery or bondage, like in Leviticus 26 when God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt so that you would no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with heads held high. You see, the yoke of slavery is not a desirable thing, and God delivers the people of Israel from that yoke into freedom. But then in today's reading, we hear Jesus use the word yoke in a different way, saying, take my yoke, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. He invites the listener to be subject to the yoke. It seems Jesus is saying that by being joined with him, by being so with him as two animals yoked together, it is then that their burden, our burden, is made bearable because Jesus is there to share that weight that weighs us down. Episcopal priest Barbara Brown Taylor writes about her year as a hospital chaplain. She writes, I conducted Sunday services in a tiny chapel on the ground floor of a big city hospital. Every Sunday at 10 a.m., my congregation of four or five or six would arrive. A man in pajamas with an IV pole a patient from the psychiatric ward chaperoned by an orderly, the parents of a child who lay close to death from spinal meningitis up on the sixth floor. One by one, they hauled their grief and misery into that little chapel where there was not much to see, just an old used, an electric organ, the backs of one another's heads, and a simple pulpit made out of light oak with a few words carved on the front of it, come unto me all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. She says for the first time in her life, she knew what that verse meant. Now honestly, I don't really know much about yokes or beasts of burdens. I, I did read this week that there are two basic kinds of yokes that can be used to bear heavy loads, single ones and shared ones. The single ones work okay. And, and by placing a single yoke across the shoulders and fitting, say, buckets hung on each side, even human beings can carry almost as much as a donkey, so I read. But a person doing so will tire easily and need to sit down to rest every so often, and their shoulders will hurt, and their backs may even give out. But still it is possible to move great loads from one place to another using one donkey or even one human being under a single yoke. But what I was reading says a shared yoke works quite differently. A shared yoke requires twice as many creatures, donkeys or oxen or even humans. But if they are a well-matched pair, they can work all day because under a shared yoke, one can rest a little while the other one pulls. 
and the two can take turns bearing the brunt of the load. They can cover for each other without ever laying their burden down because the yoke is shared. They have company all day long, and when the day is done, both may be tired, but neither is exhausted because they are a team. Now, interestingly, lots of us live under the single yoke. We can go it alone. We don't need Jesus. We don't need anybody else. It's a self-help kind of world, and we can do it alone. While all the time, Jesus is standing right there in front of us with half of a shared yoke across his shoulders, the other half wide open, waiting for us. All we have to do is step into it, and then the burden, our burden, is lifted. Now, I don't know what is weighing you down, relationships or lack thereof, job or lack thereof, test results, addictions, depression, parents, children, a failing spouse, I don't know. But hear these words. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. As we gather together in prayer, a series of petitions is included, 
each ending with, Lord, in your mercy, responding, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Now, trusting, believing that our prayers are heard, come bring your burdens and the burdens of this world to God in prayer. of life, we come to you from many places. Some hearts overflow with joy and gratitude, while other hearts are barely hanging on to hope and faith. For some, this is an ordinary morning. For others, every step feels fragile and a struggle. Holy One, come and meet us where we are, And let us know your presence with us as you bind us to each other in your love, as your family gathered together, so that in the community of your love, we might know your peace and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. God of every beginning, we pray for your children. We pray for infants growing in their mother's wombs, for children exploring the world and testing their imaginations, for youth discovering their own integrity. We pray for children who cannot take safety and comfort for granted. God of life, we pray for your children all over the world. Lord, in your mercy. God of all time, we ask your blessing on our work and on our rest, in jobs that feed our souls and in jobs that do not satisfy, in volunteer service and in routine daily tasks, in long hours of caregiving and in hours we do not know how to fill, come to us, each of us and show us how we might serve you in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy. God of all, enlarge the circles of our concern. We pray for all those who suffer violence in the streets and in their homes, that they might find safety and healing. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those suffering mental illness and those who struggle with moral dilemmas. Uphold them and grant them your peace. Lord, in your mercy. And O oh God, for those prayers, those burdens, those weights that weigh each of us down, that we are not able to bring out of our voices and our bodies aloud, but that we bear and in 
we bring them to you now. Gracious and merciful God, creator of heaven and earth, we join our voices with all that you have made in blessing you and giving thanks to you who with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit show compassion and goodness to all. Now joining our voices in the prayer Jesus taught his friends, let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, God is faithful and gracious to us, upholds us, and raises us up. Let us show our thanksgiving by giving generously to support ministries that ease the burdens and give rest to those in need. With thanksgiving, let us present our tithes and offerings to the Lord.
Let us pray. Compassionate God, we ask that you bless and multiply these gifts, that they may be used to proclaim the glory of your kingdom and make known to all people the power of your gracious love, the love that takes away the burdens that weigh down. For we pray in Christ's name, amen. bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go rejoicing in your salvation by loving others to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.